It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. For today's episode of Comparative Mystology, we're going to talk about Miraculous Conception or Virgin Births and compare and contrast various historical figures as well as mythological characters about their various birth stories. Before I start the video, I want to give a special thanks to Holy Humanists for hosting this video and that way I can educate you guys. We're going to start things off with the Greek mythology because Greek mythology, besides Norse mythology, is probably one of my favorite forms of mythology there is. And I guess for those who are new to mythology and want to know more about the Greek mythology, you guys are probably asking to yourself, well, geez, Tyler, how can I find material for Greek mythology? What kind of books I need to purchase? There's like a lot of different material when it comes down to Greek mythology. The most famous and earliest of the bunch are the works of Homer. And Homer did the Odyssey and the Iliad, and I recommend these books. It shames me to say this, but the Odyssey was my first ever exposure to the world of Greek mythology. I was actually in ninth grade when I saw this story for the first time, and I think it was the first time also that I was exposed to the idea that there are various different concepts of different gods and goddesses, because prior to the whole entire exposure, I thought that the Judeo-Christian god was the only kind of god. If you want a book that talks about the cosmology and the history about the whole entire creation of the entire universe, I would recommend this book that is called The Agony and Working Days. But if you want to have a collection of all the mythology into one book, I would recommend a book that's called The Library of Apollodorus, which has the oldest ancient collection of all the myths into one place. There's also the book that's called Metamorphosis, which goes into like a lot of details about various transformations for the gods. But let's just say you're just poor and you cannot afford any of these books, but you want all the Greek mythology in one place, then I personally recommend this book that's called The Greek Myths, and it's the main source that I'm going to use for this video for the comparisons. There's no doubt in my mind that Greek civilization continue to have an impact on Western society because thanks to the Greeks, we have the mythology from them, we have the philosophy from them, we have logic from them, we basically have the idea of democracy from them. So like a lot of aspects about American society and Western society comes directly from the Greek societies in the past. We love Greek society so much that we call the entire planets Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn, Neptune, and so on. There are various types of creation stories for Greek mythology, but the most common story is that everything just sprang out of chaos and all the gods were basically born from that chaos onto the whole entire earth. Now, Kronos, the father of Zeus, decided to rub out the testicles of Uranus and just toss in the water. Yeah, like a uh, very, very uh, bloody there. When Kronos' wife was giving birth to his son and daughters, he kept eating them and eating them and eating them. And of course, he gave birth to Zeus. And Zeus got older and older, and he finally freed his brothers and sisters directly from his father. And Kronos was trapped into Tartarus for all of eternity. There was like a humongous fight against the Titans and Zeus and blah, 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 blah. But one thing that is really consistent with Zeus is the fact that he has the ability to just violate women and sleep women through trickery. And this is like a common thing throughout the whole entire case for Greek mythology. The amount of rapes, amount of trickery that Zeus has done. The first story is the birth of the goddess Astina. Zeus lusted after Metis the Titaness, who turned into many shapes to escape him until she was caught at last and got with child. An oracle of Mother Earth then declared that this would be a girl child, and that if Metis conceived again, she would bear a son who was fated to depose Zeus, just as Zeus had deposed Cronus, and Cronus had deposed Uranus. Therefore, having coaxed Metis to a couch with honeyed words, Zeus suddenly opened his mouth and swallowed her, and that was the end of Metis though he claimed afterwards that she gave him counsel from inside his belly. In due process of time, 
he was seized by a raging headache as he walked by the shores of Lake Triton, so that his skull seemed about to burst, and he howled for rage until the whole firmament echoed. Up ran Hermes, who at once divined the cause of Zeus's discomfort. He persuaded Hephaestus, or some say Prometheus, to fetch his wedge and beetle and make a breach in Zeus's skull, from which Athene sprang, fully formed, with a mighty shout. Another example of somebody being the son of Zeus is the god that is called Dionysus, and Dionysus so happens to be the god of wine. And surprise, surprise, throughout the whole entire mythology it says that he was actually born two times throughout the whole entire tale. The mother of Zeus's son Dionysus is variously named. Some say that she was Demeter, or Io. Some name her Dione, some Persephone, with whom Zeus coupled in the likeness of a serpent, and some Lethe. But the common story runs as follows. Zeus, disguised as a mortal, had a secret love affair with Semele, Moon, daughter of King Cadmus of Thebes, and jealous Hera, disguising herself as an old neighbour, advised Semele, then already six months with child, to make her mysterious lover a request, that he would no longer deceive her, but reveal himself in his true nature and form. How, otherwise, could she know that he was not a monster? Semele followed this advice, and, when Zeus refused her plea, denied him further access to her bed. Then, in anger, he appeared as thunder and lightning, and she was consumed. But Hermes saved her six-month son, sewed him up inside Zeus's thigh to mature there for three months longer, and in due course of time delivered him. Thus Dionysus is called Twice-Born, or the Child of the Double Door. Also, let us not forget about the birth of Apollo and Hermes. They're not as well known, but they're still worth a mention for this whole entire video. Amorous Zeus lay with numerous nymphs descended from the Titans or the gods, and, after the creation of man, with mortal women too. No less than four great Olympian deities were born to him out of wedlock. First he begat Hermes on Maia, daughter of Atlas, who bore him in a cave on Mount Selene in Arcadia. Next he begat Apollo and Artemis on Leto, daughter of the Titans Coeus and Phoebe, transforming himself and her into quails when they coupled. But jealous Hera sent the serpent Python to pursue Leto all over the world, and decreed that she should not be delivered in any place where the sun shone. Carried on the wings of the south wind, Leto at last came to Ortygia, close to Delos, where she bore Artemis, who was no sooner born than she helped her mother across the narrow straits, and there, between an olive tree and a date palm, growing on the north side of Delian Mount Synthus, delivered her of Apollo on the ninth day of labor. But the most famous son of Zeus, surprise, surprise, happens to be Hercules. Electrion, son of Perseus, high king of Mycenae and husband of Anaxo, marched vengefully against the Taphians and Teleboans. They had joined in a successful raid on his cattle, planned by one Telereus, a claimant to the Mycenaean throne, which had resulted in the death of Electrion's eight sons. While he was away, his nephew, King Amphitryon of Troezen, acted as regent. Rule well, and when I return victorious, you shall marry my daughter Alcmene, Electrion cried in farewell. Amphitryon, informed by the king of Elis that the stolen cattle were now in his possession, paid the large ransom demanded, and recalled Electrion to identify them. Electrion, by no means pleased to learn that Amphitryon expected him to repay his ransom, asked harshly what right had the Elians to sell stolen property, and why did Amphitryon condone in a fraud? Disdaining to reply, Amphitryon vented his annoyance by throwing a club at one of the cows which had strayed from the herd. It struck her horns, rebounded, and killed Electrion. Thereupon Amphitryon was banished from Argolis by his uncle Sthenelus, who seized Mycenae and Tyrans 
and entrusted the remainder of the country, with Midia for its capital, to Atreus and Thaestes, the son of Pelops. Amphitryon, accompanied by Alcmene, fled to Thebes, where King Creon purified him, and gave his sister Perimede in marriage to Electrion's only surviving son, Lysimnius, a bastard born by a Phrygian woman named Midia. But the pious Alcmene would not lie with Amphitryon until he had avenged the death of her eight brothers. Creon therefore gave permission to raise a Boeotian army for this purpose, on condition that he freed Thebes of the Teomessian vixen, which he did by borrowing the celebrated hound Lelaps from Cephalus the Athenian. Then, aided by Athenian, Phocian, Argive and Locrian contingents, Amphitryon overcame the Teleboans and Taphians, and bestowed their islands on his allies, among them his uncle Helius. Meanwhile Zeus, taking advantage of Amphitryon's absence, impersonated him, and assuring Alcmene that her brothers were now avenged, since Amphitryon had indeed gained the required victory that very morning, lay with her all one night, to which he gave the length of three. For Hermes, at Zeus's command, had ordered Helius to quench the solar fires, have the hours unyoke his team, and spend the following day at home, because the procreation of so great a champion as Zeus had in mind could not be accomplished in haste. Helius obeyed, grumbling about the good old times when day was day and night was night, and when Cronus, the then almighty god, did not leave his lawful wife and go off to Thebes on love adventures. Hermes next ordered the moon to go slowly, and sleep to make mankind so drowsy that no one would notice what was happening. Alcmene, wholly deceived, listened delightedly to Zeus's account of the crushing defeat inflicted on Telereus at Achalia, and sported innocently with her supposed husband for the whole thirty-six hours. On the next day, when Amphitryon returned, eloquent of victory and his passion for her, Alcmene did not welcome him to the marriage couch so rapturously as he had hoped. "'We never slept a wink last night,' she complained, "'and surely you do not expect me to listen twice to the story of your exploits?' Amphitryon, unable to understand these remarks, consulted the seer Tiresias, who told him that he had been cuckolded by Zeus, and thereafter he never dared sleep with Alcmene again, for fear of incurring divine jealousy. Nine months later, on Olympus, Zeus happened to boast that he had fathered a son, now at the point of birth, who would be called Heracles, which means glory of Hera, and rule the noble house of Perseus. When it comes down to historical figures, there is no denying that sometimes the people who write down things about the historical figures, they tend to fabricate or fictionalize the historical figure to make the story more fantastical than it actually is. Let's begin with Alexander the Great. His father Philip, when he was quite young, fell in love there with Olympias and company from whom he was entitled in the religious ceremony of the country, and her mother and father being both dead soon after, with the consent of her brother, he married her. The night before the consummation of their marriage, she dreamed of a center ball fall on her body, which kindled a great fire, who divided flames dispersed themselves all about, and then were distinguished. And Philip, sometime after he was married, dreamt that he slilled up his body's body with a seal, whose impression as be fancy with a figure of a lion. Some of the diviners interpret this as a warning to Philip to look nearly to his wife, but a standard of Tamaris, considering how unusual it was to seal up anything that was empty, ensured him the meaning of his dream was that the queen was with child of a boy, who would one day prove as courageous as a lion. Once more so, a serpent was found lying by Olympus as he slept, which is more than anything else. It is said a beta Philip's passion for her, and what did he fear as an acanthus, or thought she had commerce with some god, and so look on himself as excluded, he was ever less fond of her conversation. Others say that the women in this country haven't always been extremely addicted to the enthusiastic optic rifts and the wild worship of Dionysus, and that Olympus zealously affecting those fanciful enthusiastic inspirations to perform them, 
with more barbaric dread. Was won't and the dancers proper to these ceremonies to have a great time serpents about her, were sometimes creeping out of the ivory in the mystic fans, sometimes winning themselves about the scare spears and about the women's chaplains made a spectacle which men could not look upon without terror. Philip, after this vision, who sent Kieran a megalopolis to consult the oracle of Apollo, by which he was commanded to perform sacrifice and him for pay a particular honor above all other gods, and was told he shall one day lose that eye which he presumed to peep through that clink of the door when he saw the god under the form of a serpent and the company of his wife. Another person that had a divine birth is also Plato. It is commonly said, even during his own lifetime, that Plato was of divine birth. The story no doubt developed much more after Plato's death, goes into the figure of the god Apollo, came to Plato's virgin mother, and impregnated her. When his father attempted to lie with her, the god appeared to him in a vision, commanding him to estrain from her for 10 months until the child was born. But the most famous one in the bunch is no doubt Jesus Christ. The birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. His mother Mary has promised to Joseph in marriage, but before they were married, Mary realized that she was pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph was an honorable man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the marriage agreement with her secretly. Joseph had this in mind when the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. The angel said to him, Joseph, the sin of the day, but don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. She is pregnant by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus Christ. What do you guys think about these stories about miraculous conception? Tell me in the comment section down below, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.